From 1980, and the very first Screamer of the Week on WLIR, that's Susie Quattro with Rock Hard. To call Susie a legendary rocker is no exaggeration, setting aside her trailblazing work that's influenced generations of female rockers. Susie has just plain rocked, period, since the early 70s with no sign of slowing down. In fact, just last year she put out a new record called In the Spotlight, and tonight she's taking time out of her busy touring schedule to talk with us. You know, Susie, I spoke to uh, Cherie Curry maybe a couple of years ago on the show, and she said that I think the quote she gave was that you and Fanny kicked the door down and the runaways ran through it. I mean, well, they're... I was in all girl bands first, but what made the breakthrough, for, uh, you know, for for all women, and it it had to fall on somebody was going to do it sooner or later. Right, you know, it was going to happen, and um, there had not been a female rocker ever. You know, band of girls, yes, stuff yeah. like that, but not a singular one leading a band of guys doing the male job in the front. Right, which is what I did, which differentiated me, um, and. I never did gender. I don't do gender now. It just it's not in my not in my vocabulary. I'm a bass player. Maybe that's why it fell to me to to kick it down. Fanny were an all girl band, you know. I mean, I don't know why Cherie would have said that. They they've gone on record many times, even in the film. Right. Nothing to do with Fanny. They've gone they even dedicated the film to me. You know, so Fanny was way, way before that. Um then they were an all girl band, but I had had lots of success. You know, Fanny didn't have big success. People knew them, but I mean, I was having number one records all over the place, and this is what changed those girls around. I mean, Joan Jett was at every show of mine. Well, you could you see know? it. You could see it in her in her oh, uh, Jesus, stage. Yeah, act, sure. Yeah, I mean, not now. You know, to be fair, she's moved on and I move on, but she definitely took as her inspiration my first image. Absolutely. I mean, you have to be a blind man not to see right. that. <laughs> right. And you know? Uh, you know, and to be honest with you, there's a lot of current bands who are still using that first image. Yeah, sure. Use, you know? That's what Mike says on the album in the footnotes. He says every female that's come along in the last 40 years owes something to Susie. No, we get a, yeah, we get a lot of records in here, and I take a look at the cover, and I go, oh, yeah, look, I know, four I Susie know. Quattro's I really on the cover. Something, which is good. Yeah, yeah. But I am the original. I hold on to my title of original. <laughs> right, right. And that early success must have led to your stint on Happy Days as Leather Tuscadero. I mean, that must have been a heck of a publicity coup, you know, in, in getting your yeah, name I out there. Yeah, I made the decision, you know, to take the show. I think it was I think it was a really good decision. Oh, yeah. But as I was watching the show, and of course it's a great show and everybody loves it, but like a lot of things on that program, like Mr. Cunningham's Digital Watch, it was sort of strange because you didn't look like you really stepped out of the 50s, but hardly anyone on that show did. You know, I, I yeah, can't really it just explain kind of it. Fit. It gave it an edge, actually. Yeah. You know, I was supposed to be this kid out of reform school and all that, so why wouldn't I be edgy? I would probably flaunt the rules, you know? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, actually, I want to talk to you about uh, going to Russia. Have you played Russia before? I have no idea what the rock scene is there. Yeah, we've been going to Russia for years. I first went in um, 1989, just when Glasnost was beginning, and I've been going regularly ever since. In fact, I'm going there in about a week and a half. I always thought to myself, well, where do they get records on the black market? I mean, I, obviously that's all changed. but That's all changed now, but they did used to get it on the black market, yes. I mean, we have a lot of fans there. We played the first trip we did that we played to over half a million people. Wow. Uh, your latest album? Yeah. From, uh, well, actually, it came out last year, and hooking up again with Mike Chapman, who yes. obviously, you know, he, he worked with you in the very early 70s, and I think you... You sort of, you know, you you collaborated with him maybe on and off over the years, but this is like, uh, he wrote four tunes on this record for you. Um, we uh, have always worked together, but we haven't made a full-blown album together for, for a few years. That's what this was. This was an actual album again, right. so we got our teeth into it, you know. But yeah, we always have worked together. We've never lost touch. Why now? Why do that full-blown album now? Well, it started with, um, I mean, like I say, we have been doing singles and bits and pieces right. all the way through the years, but... The last album I had, I called Back to the Drive, Mike was executive producer on that one. And it was uh, produced by Andy Scott from Sweet. And it was autobiographical. Every single song was about my life, and it represented 15 years of writing. And Mike oversaw it and all that. And then I, then I was prompted to write my book after that because everybody enjoyed the songs and what they meant, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mike said to me, now that you got that all out of your system, let's go make an album. <laughs> <laughs> and and he said he knows exactly what he wants to do. So he 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 let he he made me give him control on this particular album, which I was happy to do. Would it be fair to say that some of these tracks harken back to uh, your very early sound? 
I don't know. Um, I think that if I, I was just starting, and this, this was my first album, that this is what I would sound like. That's how I see it. How did you become aware of uh, the Goldfrapp song, Strict Machine? Because obviously you, you throw in like a nod to Can the Can. I know. In the song, well, I mean, the Mike best part. played it for me. Mike sent it to me. He said, I'd like to do this. What do you think? I thought, great. We got in the studio, and I'm playing the bass away, and I said, Mike, is this Can the Can? He said, <laughs> mm. He said, possibly. I said, can I do something? He said, go on. So I did. He said, okay, we'll leave it in. Because <laughs> it's, you know, it's not a copy copy, but it's very similar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. this this has happened over the years, you know, but, but... Yeah, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. We all get influenced, you know? Right. Have you heard from them at all regarding the cover? Uh, I think somebody told me that they've read a couple things in the, in the press that they liked it a lot, you know? I think it's a good version of it. That's Susie Quattro's 1973 hit, Can the Can. Susie Quattro is our guest tonight. And uh, let's talk about new music. What new music are you into these days? Uh, right now, I'm sort of, I, I'm just rediscovering Coldplay. I think they're brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Keen. I like our Red Hot Chili Peppers. Girls-wise, uh, I love Adele. I just right. love her voice. Love her voice. Uh, yeah, you know, I listen all the time. I listen to things all the time. Well, I know a major love for you is Elvis Presley, and you've got oh, yeah, like sure. you, you've got like the Elvis fans' dream on uh, on on this record and, and the track singing with angels because you've got the Jordanaires, you've got James Burton. How did this all come together? Uh, well, okay. Long story short, this is a long story. Um, I broke my arm in uh, 2007, and I was just about to go to Australia, and. Uh, I had to take a, I had to do the tour because you don't do that to people, you know, it was sold right. out. And I had to take the stand and bass player. So just to make it a little bit more uh, you know, palatable to the audience, I decided to do a little unplug section, um, which I'd never done before, and I needed a song about Elvis. I didn't have one, so I wrote one. <laughs> and long story short, it became the hit of the tour, even so much so that we had to end our show with it, believe it or not. Wow. And I called James Burton called the Jordanaires, they kind of said, oh, you know, my God, Susie, we do things like this so much. You know, they said, send it. Right. So I sent it, and James called me, and he said, book the, book the flight now. Wow. So what a compliment. And, and Ray has been, gone on record to say it's the best tribute he ever heard. Well, it's fantastic. I mean, obviously Elvis is a huge uh, influence on you. By the huge. way, very quickly, your favorite Elvis cut. Um, it's two. I like... Don't be cruel. It's my uh-huh. favorite fast. I just love it because it's the first time I saw him. Right. And um, I just think it's hard to be love me tender. Yeah. No, it's an incredible. It's so simple. I should tell you, I'm a huge Elvis fan. Like I have the you know the box sets, the outtakes. I'm like one of these people. It's like, oh, he sneezed on take six. I have to own it. You know. Oh, <laughs> you're one of those. Yeah, I am like okay. a total nut. Uh, I think he did. I actually think he did a lot of great work in the '70s. That's completely misunderstood oh, so or not I. listened to. I'm not just one that just likes the early stuff. No, but yeah. I think your early memories stay. But I think he's been valid all the way through. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of it was kind of like uh, the trendy thing to knock him for about a good 15 yeah, years. Sure, it goes up and down. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. The normal game people play, you know. The song we're talking about is "Singing with Angels" from Susie's new album, In the Spotlight. And here's Susie along with James Burton and the Jordanaires. Now that I, I have you here, and I, I should mention to the audience that you are a uh, globe-trotting musician, because my God, you're constantly I know. playing shows. I, I mean, you know, in setting up this interview, it was kind of funny because I'm getting emails from you, and it's like, well, I'm in Paris, I'm, all all I'm in Spain. Place. I know my whole life has been has been uh, jet lag city. You know, <laughs> you're primarily based in England, though, right? I mean, you yes. have been for a long, long yes. time. I'm just next week starting my one woman show in London, which I'm extremely excited about. What's that all called- about? called unzipped it's like my book and okay it's, uh, it's a it's an unplugged uh, journey through my life with a little bit of film and music and me talking a lot and unplugged music on stage and it's something i've wanted to do forever and i'm finally doing it that's awesome and i know yeah. you've also done uh I, I in fact i'm talking to a peer because you've done some radio in, in the uk as well oh well i've been on the radio on bbc radio too since 1999 i've had my own show for a long time now Let me ask you, because things have changed, uh, obviously, in the music business, and for a long time, I have to be honest, 
a lot of your records were kind of hard to come by in the States, like through 80s and 90s, but with the internet, and now you can go to oh, Amazon. All over and, the place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, something like that has got to be just an amazing thing for you. I mean, I, I suppose it's a, for some, some artists will say it's, it's not a benefit at all because there's a lot of piracy going on. I think it's great. Yeah, you like it, huh? I do. I love it all. I yeah. think the more people you reach, the better. That's what I'm in the business for. And you got the uh, a video for Strict Machine. I do. In fact, it just came out now. There's a limited edition available of In the Spotlight. And um, on it, you get one extra disc, which is called In the Dark, which is demos of mine uh-huh. that nobody's heard. Actually, you've heard a few of them. They've been redone, but these are the original recordings. And it's an enhanced DVD, so you also get the video clip of the making of Singing with Angels, believe it or not. Oh, very cool. Did and, we see, did we, I'm sorry, do we see footage of uh, yes. James Burton? Yeah, oh, yeah. Very I was, cool. I was uh, smart enough to have somebody film it. Well, you got a sale right there. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's fantastic. I'm so glad it's on there. And also, um, Strict Machine is on there with a teeny, teeny little difference. There was one version that we didn't release. So, But you do get Singing with Angels, which is just fantastic. Uh, when are you coming to the U.S.? Uh, let me think. I'm coming in April to get my award at the DMA Awards that I had to cancel because of my accident. Yeah, I know. You know, horrible, 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 horrible. God, I don't even ask. You know, just go on Facebook and read it. Um, I'm now better, though. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm back fighting for him. But it was a long old haul. It was four months, you know, on a walker, so not good. Jeez. Um, I'm going there. I think I'm also getting awarded in Austin, Texas in November. Uh, we're trying to get some gigs set up there, you know, so yeah. I hope to come there soon. I really wish you'd come to New York City. I would love to. That would be fantastic. I'm waiting for this agent to contact me because uh, I know that they want me to go there and do some gigs. So hopefully, I, hopefully I'll tell you, I will. I'd love you to do New York City, and I'd love you to do Graceland. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, okay. <laughs> I wish, fantastic. I, 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 wish oh, I, could, even go there. I wish okay. I could wave my hands and make it happen, but that would be there incredible. You go. All right. Thanks so much, Susie. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> 